In this video, we'll load a program on the demo and then connect to the servos with Sigma Win Plus version 7. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview. In order to learn how to work with Sigma 7, it will be to our advantage to set up a demo as a working motion control system that we can operate using the remote I.O. interface. The MPIEC motion controller is not the focus of this video series, so I'll guide you through the steps to load the program using the controller's web UI. Then we'll connect Sigma Win Plus version 7 through the controller to each of the three servo axes. All right, let's get started. Here you see I have connection to the remote demo, and I've got the camera up, and also here's the web page of the controller. Let me open the remote I.O. And I do have connection to the Z-axis hardware, although I don't have any connection at the top part here to the controller. I don't have any alarms at this point, but if you have any alarms scrolling on the front panel, that's okay. We're going to take care of all that in the next step. Now I'll guide you through these steps to load the program. The controller program is referred to as the archive in the web UI. And we do have another self-guided video training series on this controller if you're interested. The first step here is to go to the web UI, which I have open in Chrome. And under the user, click login. And the login credentials are admin with capital A. And the password is all caps MP. 3300. You can check the remember me box to make it easier if you ever have to come in here again and click sign in. Now to send the program we need to do two steps and the first one is under the setup menu and it's called archive. Choose archive then click send and add archive. And Now you need to navigate to the class materials folder and send the file called Archive Sigma 7. I'll highlight that one and click Open. Now you see that's been selected. We click Send and finally Install. The controller says Installing Archive and now we need to reboot the controller which can be done through this Reboot button. Reboot and then confirm again with Reboot. This takes about 30 seconds and you can look at the camera in the meantime. When the servos flash off like you see here, that means that the system has rebooted. So that put the program onto this controller, but we need to send some parameters from this controller over Mechatrolink 3 to each of these amplifiers. So back to the web UI, under setup again, go to the bottom drive parameters, and on the far right here click write all user PNs, and then confirm with write. That writes all the parameters and reboot again to make those active. So reboot, reboot. There the drive just turns off and back online. Now you may be concerned about any alarms or red lights on the controller. So go back to the web UI and under this bell icon for alarms, you see it indicates cold start required. Now under operations you see PLC is stopped so choose start, select cold and click start. Now under operations you'll have PLC running. You can go back to the alarm page and clear it. Just to test that everything's working you can pull up that remote I.O. click servo on, set a speed such as 10 Let's look at the video here, side by side, and if you hold down the jog plus, you see that the x-axis is jogging one direction, and hold down jog minus, it goes the other direction. And then you can repeat that for each of the other axes, jogging forward, and jogging reverse, just to be sure that your speed is not zero. I'll turn on these servos here one by one, and jog both directions. And what you're doing here is you are interfacing with the controller, telling this controller to command motion to each of these servo axes. 
And yes, there's a lot of other buttons in this interface, but this is all we'll do for now. Now that we have this working motion control demo system, let's open up Sigma Win Plus and connect to the servos. So go find Sigma Win Plus version 7. And when it loads here, you can click connect to the servo pack. And you can see there are several ways to connect to the servo pack, depending on the hardware that you have. You got USB, Ethernet, controller connection. And I'd like to say a few words about USB connection, even though that's not what we will be using here for this class. USB is just your most simple single servo access connection. Just directly connect a USB cable from your computer to the amplifier. Now, if you wanted to see several servos at the same time, like we have here, you could use a USB hub or have several USB cables going into different ports on your computer. And when you connect this way, there is a driver that has to be installed, and that requires manual installation. The driver files exist when you install Sigma Win Plus version 7, but you'll need to open Device Manager to manually search for and find those drivers and install them. If you want to connect this way and you want a little guidance, we do have a separate video on connecting Sigma Win Plus over USB. But the connection method that works the best for this remote demo scenario is to connect over Ethernet to the controller and then through the controller over Mechatrolink 3 to provide communication to each of the servo axes. So back in Sigma Win Plus, you might think, okay, we need Ethernet connection or you might even want to try controller connection. However, as you look at these graphics carefully, you do see that Ethernet connection means a direct Ethernet connection to the servo itself, and controller connection is specifically for the standard MP series controllers, not the IEC series controllers. So let's keep scrolling here to the right and choose Mechatrolink Relay Device. The MPIEC controller is seen as what we call a relay device. It relays the information from Mechatrolink to Ethernet. Now once you've selected this on the right side, you see there are settings for both the computer and the relay device, the controller itself. Let's start with computer communication settings and click on that. Now we need to choose the network adapter over which we're communicating. And if you remember, we're using the link manager adapter to communicate remotely to this demo. So let's choose Link Manager Adapter, and then click Set. Now, if you've made any mistakes, it will give you a message, and you'll have to attempt to do this again. Next is the IP address, not of the computer, but of the relay device, meaning the MPIEC controller. Well, that's the same IP address that you had in the Link Manager for the demo and in the controller itself. 192.168.15.85 in my case. So let me update that. And then just to see if you have communication from computer to controller, click the test ping and you'll see communications are okay. And finally, now we have the settings from the controller, the relay device, over Mechatrolink to the amplifiers. And that is the station address of the connected servos. Both of the servos are networked over Mechatrolink 3 to the MP3300 IEC controller. The dual access amplifier is set for network nodes 3 and 4, while the single access amplifier is set to node 5. Therefore, we will set the station address here as starting at 3, and ending at 5. With these settings in place, we are ready to search for servo packs. When successful, you will see that you're connected to the SGD7W, the dual axis servo, and the SGD7S, the single axis servo, and you can confirm with connect. It does say please wait for a while, so you do need to be patient at this point. We are now connected. So let me just explain the main idea of what's going on here. We have the two servo drives. And you can click on this little menu icon. And that brings up the menu for that drive. 
What we've been calling axis X and Y here are referred to as axis A and axis B. And you'd highlight those ahead of time and then choose the menu item that you want for that servo axis. We can close this and do the same thing for the other servo. Newer versions of Sigma Win Plus have the menu items laid out in a different order than what you'll see in the videos, but scroll through the categories and you'll find it. And if a menu item like you see here is grayed out, all that means is that this function's not available with the current conditions or the current functions that are open. So you may need to close windows before you open different functions. And when you use this software, there's going to be a lot of closing this window and, and just reopening this window to get the function that you want. And now before we wrap up this section of the training, I think it's a good time to save this Sigma Wing Plus project for the first time. On the top left here, hit the Save Project icon. Then navigate to wherever you'd like to save this file, and let's call it Sigma 7 Training. The advantage to using this project file feature is that it will help you organize the parameter files for each of the axes, and it even lets you uh, look at different dates at which you've saved different parameters for the different axes in your system. Kind of keeps them all in one place. We now have a working demo system. We're connected over Sigma Win Plus, and we're ready to start using the different features of this software. Thank you for watching this video. For more information on Sigma 7, please go to yaskawa.com, Products, Sigma 7 Servo Products.